Ten on Sports Central. We go over our next team prediction of this offseason. And it's going to be for potentially one of the biggest dark horses in the nation going into the 2021 season. And that's going to be the Texas Longhorns. This team was 7-3 overall in the 2020 season. Not a bad year at all for this team as they were certainly a top half team in the Big 12 Conference. One of the teams kind of in the background of the conference last season. But this was actually a pretty good team last year once again a 7-3 overall record. How they be in 2021 though is what we're going over here today. We're going to go ahead and get started. We'll be looking at your season trends here today before uh, we get into the schedule predictions. So uh, looking at your season trends from 2020, this team was once again 73 overall, 3-2 uh, and two in their first five games, 4-1 and one in their last five. So this team um, record-wise did actually improve over the course of the season. Uh, they had several really good wins down the stretch as well. Uh, they had that huge upset win over Oklahoma State on the road. That was a huge win there, 41-34. Uh, also beat West Virginia, talented team there, 17 to 13. Blew out Kansas State, huge, 69 to 31, and that was before beating Colorado in their bowl game, 55 to 23, was the final score there. So obviously, Colorado was a former Big 12 opponent. We used to see them play all the time uh, back about a decade ago, but uh, of course, that was a great win there for Texas, beating them by over 30. So, and Colorado actually was a pretty good team last season. So, uh, considering that, Texas actually had a really good finish. To last season but looking at your returning production this is where we find out whether or not texas is going to be a talented team next season or whether or not this is going to be kind of a rebuilding team uh just looking at this year i mean you got sam ellinger of course he was your uh, starting quarterback for the past few years and he is not going to be back uh, for the 2021 season he was a senior uh, last year so he's not going to be back 2500 years is what he had 26 touchdowns five interceptions also a 60 percent completion rate Overall, not a bad season out of Sam Ellinger, and I think he's definitely been overshadowed uh, over the past couple of years for sure. I think Sam Ellinger is actually a great quarterback that doesn't get anywhere near enough credit, so um, that's going to be a tough loss there, but it looks pretty good at the quarterback position. You got two uh, very talented quarterbacks there with Casey Thompson and Hudson Card uh, going up for that um, top position or that starting position at quarterback, so... I'm assuming it's going to be Casey Thompson from what, I'm he from what I'm hearing right now. It sounds like he had the better spring, uh, but Hudson Card is in the background. Uh, Casey Thompson does have the most experience with this team, as he did actually play a little bit last season, 225 yards, uh, six touchdowns, 70% completion rate as well uh, when he did play for the Longhorns last year. As for the running back core, if you got, of course, you got Robinson coming back. You also got Rashawn Johnson. Uh, your top two running backs are coming back for next season. Looking at Robinson, he put up just over 800 yards, nearly 900 yards, actually, and six touchdowns. Rashawn Johnson, uh, not too far behind, right around 500 yards and seven touchdowns. So running back core looks great going into next season. That is not a concern uh, by any means for me uh, for this team next season at all. Looking at the receiving core, though, of course, you got Josh Moore. He's coming back. He was your top wide receiver last season. Um, and he is definitely going to be a key player next season. He put up just over 470 yards. Uh, Brennan Eagles, he is not going to be back. He was your second wide receiver last season. Also put up 450 yards, so that'll, be, that'll probably be one of the tougher losses on your offensive side. Jake Smith, he was your third wide out. He will be back for next season, so you've got your first and third uh, wide outs both coming back there with Josh Moore and Jake Smith. So Really, as far as it goes for the skill players positions for Texas, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, of course, the quarterback situation is a question mark there. Uh, but you got two very talented quarterbacks um, competing for that starting position with Casey Thompson and Hudson Card. So you should be just fine there. Uh, that's not much of a concern to me at all um, in the quarterback position. Uh, of course, once again, losing Brennan Eagles will be a tough loss there. But otherwise, you still got Josh Moore and Jake Smith coming back. So um, that kind of cancels it out. I'm not really concerned about that position there. As for the offensive line, you lose one on there. You lose one offensive lineman to one linebacker and two in the secondary. So you lose uh, four on the defensive side of the ball. Overall, this returning production looks good for Texas, though. This is definitely a team that I think uh, could be a contender in the Big 12 next season. Only problem is for the Longhorns is you got to go up against Oklahoma and Iowa State, both of which I could easily see being top six teams next season. I mean, you got Oklahoma, of course. He's got Spencer Rattler, who's more than likely going to be one of the top quarterbacks in the nation next season and he also got a very talented team there and then he got iowa state on the flip side which iowa state is one of the most experienced teams in the nation next year and uh with as great of a coach as they do in matt campbell i mean iowa state i could see them definitely uh, being a college football playoff contender next season so you got to definitely watch out for both of those teams there but for texas i mean for this team to make it into the top two it's gonna be pretty tough um i definitely think that i'm not i'm not putting it out of the question that texas can make a run for it but it's definitely going to be really tough beating out uh, the top two teams in Oklahoma and Iowa State next season. But 
Uh, Keys to having an outstanding season. I mean, the quarterback position is definitely going to have to be good for Texas. Um, they're going to have to be an ex they're going to have to be exceptional at the quarterback position. Uh, whether it's Casey Thompson or Hudson Card, they're going to have to play very well if Texas will be a big contender in the conference. But uh, once again, I do think Texas next season. I mean, if you're going to be in the top two, you got to beat Oklahoma and you got to beat um, Iowa State for sure, and you can't take. Um, any terrible losses that's for sure as well so but looking at your schedule it is not easy for texas next season you got louisiana of course uh, which said it's gonna be a tough game there louisiana is probably gonna be a top 12 or not top 12 top 25 team in the conference next season so watch out for them arkansas i don't see them being quite as good next season as they were last year i mean that was actually a pretty talented team in 2020 but they don't have felipe franks anymore so i'm not too concerned about arkansas but it is on the road so do be aware of that you got Rice then at home. That'll be an easier matchup. Texas Tech could be an easier matchup. TCU on the road, that could be a tough one, actually. I think TCU next year actually could be a potential uh, bowl team for sure. I could see that team getting up to six to eight wins. Uh, Oklahoma, of course, that's going to be one of the toughest games of the season. Uh, rivalry matchup, obviously. A huge game there. Oklahoma State, you got them after that. You got Baylor on the road, Iowa State on the road, Kansas at home, uh, West Virginia on the road, then in Kansas State to finish out your season. Looking at your um, September here, of course, you got Louisiana. That's going to be a closer one. I do see Texas winning that matchup, but it is going to be close. Um, it's definitely going to be back and forth the entire way. Probably one of the better games of week one, actually, the more I think about it. I mean, you got two pretty talented teams there. I mean, you got Louisiana, who was pretty overshadowed by Coastal Carolina in the Sun Belt this past season, but they should be actually uh, right back to being a pretty good team. Um, they were definitely a contender in the Sun Belt last year, and I expect that to continue into 2021. Arkansas, that will be a close one as well with it being on the road, but once again, I think Texas will get the win. Rice will be a win. Texas Tech's going to be a close one too, but Texas will get the win in the end. So you start off the season 4-0 with three pretty close matchups. So 4-0 uh, would actually be a pretty good record going into your October. October is going to be a tough month for sure. I mean, you got TCU on the road there. I'm actually going to pick TCU in that matchup, which if you're a Texas fan, you're probably going to say, no way that Texas is losing to TCU. But, um, I mean, if you hear me out here, TCU next season with Max Duggan. Max Duggan, of course, is a very polarizing quarterback, a very inconsistent quarterback as well. He has some games where he is one of the best quarterbacks in the conference, and he has some other games where uh, you might think that he'd be definitely a bottom feeder. But TCU next season, I mean, they're returning a ton of talent. That team is actually going to be pretty experienced next season so i do see tcu definitely getting up to six to eight wins and that will be a tough matchup definitely a close matchup i think that one kind of sneaks up on uh texas there and tcu will get the win uh but it's going to be very close i mean don't get me wrong it's probably going to be a high score matchup very close tcu gets the win in the end oklahoma then you got them after that oklahoma is going to be a tough one for sure i mean once again that team is going to be definitely a national contender next season I would not be surprised to see Oklahoma in the national championship game next season. I mean, with Spencer Rattler, uh, that team is looking outstanding. Then you got Oklahoma State after that. That'll be a win, but it's going to be close. Baylor's going to be a win. Definitely an easier one there, I'd say, even though it's on the road. Baylor's going to be a pretty terrible team next season, I would say. So you're going to be 6-2 and two going into your November. Not a terrible record at all. I mean, that probably puts you uh, third or fourth probably in the conference. So, I mean, that's not a terrible position out of 10 teams. But looking at your November there, you got Iowa State on the road. Iowa State's going to be super motivated. I mean, when you're going into November and Iowa State is still in contention to be a college football playoff team, um, they're going to get the win there. It's also on the road in a somewhat tough environment, especially if Iowa State's going to be uh, probably an undefeated team at that point. Then you got Kansas. That'll be an easy win. Don't even think about that game. Kansas is going to be awful next year. Uh, West Virginia got them on the road. That'll be a closer one. West Virginia actually could be a good team next season as well. Um, I like their quarterback and that offense pretty good. Um, Kansas State, that's going to be a win as well. Probably an easier one, I'd say. Uh, but it's probably going to be between 14 and 20 points, I'd say, uh, for the win there. So 9-3 and three is going to be a record for next season. Not a terrible record at all. This probably will position you, I'd say, third in the conference. Or it should, at least, um, considering you beat Oklahoma State um, and West Virginia and all them. That should put you third in the conference, which is not a terrible position once again. I mean, when you got Oklahoma and Iowa State both, who are definitely going to be at the top of the conference next season, I mean, unless something goes terribly wrong for either of those teams, I mean, they'll definitely both be national contenders next year. But uh, that being said, yeah, let me know your thoughts and comments below, though, on this Texas team. This is definitely a team to watch out for in the future. Um, lots of talent here on this Texas uh, football team going into next season. But I appreciate you guys all watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. I'll see you guys later.